What's happening everybody and welcome to Diversity in Motorsport, our new weekly series where we showcase all the amazing initiatives to get more people of colour, women, LGBT and people with disabilities and get them motoring! Feel the power. Feel the power. Real love and never get sold. You like that one? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Nala Henry, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Blair Project. And my name is Blair Henry, inspiration behind The Blair Project. Diversity in motorsport is something we've been doing for the last six years. And we're pretty goddamn good at it. On today's show, we're going to be discussing about the recently formed Hamilton Commission, which has been set up by Lewis Hamilton himself, in partnership with the Royal Academy of Engineering, with the sole aim to make most sport more diverse. And we're also going to be talking about the lack of black role models in the engineering sector, in most sport, and how the Hamilton Commission is going to try and change that. So Blair, for our viewers at home, what is the Hamilton Commission? So the Hamilton Commission exists to use motorsport as a way of engaging black youths using STEM subjects so that they can one day be employed by motorsport teams or work in the engineering sector. Very interesting, very interesting. And I know that Lewis Hamilton has come out and said that education is the leveller and the pathway to opportunity. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. I feel that if you use education to nurture young people from a young age, I show them the opportunity that's available, then it means that they have it in their minds that they can strive and achieve anything. So I think the see me, be me aspect is also really important to see someone who looks like you and feel that you can get there as well. So for example, I was really inspired by what Lewis Hamilton did at the Styrian Grand Prix. After he won the Grand Prix and he stepped on the podium, he brought with him on the podium Stephanie Travers, mm -hmm. who works as a fluid engineer for the Mercedes Formula One team. And she's the first ever black female to ever step foot on a Formula One podium. I thought that was really inspiring, not just for black people, but for women and people of different ethnic backgrounds to show that we can get involved in this and we can strive at the top. I think that was brilliant what you said earlier about that whole concept of that see me, be me, and that is so important as somebody from an ethnic, ethnic background to see somebody like a Stephanie Travers on the podium and working in most sport, because there is a lack of people of colour working in, the, in that industry and to see that as a young person you, you can think to yourself right if Stephanie could do that then there's a chance that I can do that as well and I think that is so so important. Oh definitely and just to quote one of my idols and inspirations Malcolm X, education is our passport to the future. I like that, I like that, it's a very good quote. <laughs> And this is going to take us nicely into the next question, which is going to be why there's a lack of black role models in the engineering sector, in motorsport, and how we can change that. And Blair, you've got some figures for our viewers. Yeah, so I've been recently looking at figures from the Association of Black and Ethnic Minority Engineers, looking at the current workforce of engineers in the country, in the UK. And our current workforce that are BAME is as much as 9%. 9%? Just 9%. And of our current graduates in the country who have engineering qualifications, it's even more, 29.9%. 29.9%? As much as that. For some reason, people of BAME backgrounds, we're not getting the jobs in the engineering sector. Wow, and especially when you're here, because we work a lot alongside a lot of engineering companies, and they may tell us that they can't find the talent out there and that there needs to be, they've got loads of jobs that need to be fulfilled. But you've just said there's 29.9% of BAME people. Which is that, yeah, yeah. Who have got degrees or are highly qualified, but just can't get the job. Just can't get the jobs at all. That's just shocking. That's really shocking. And for the viewers at home, what are the benefits of having a more diverse workforce? I do feel that if you're getting people from different uh, backgrounds involved in, say, a team, you're getting different ideas, so it does increase the creativity, and then it will also then further on increase the productivity of any team. Which will drive the innovation 
which will then drive the performance of that company or in Formula One, the performance of those race cars, which will then increase the revenue for that business. So, I think the answer is, it's beneficial to have a more diverse workforce. So, to our companies at home, let's start employing more black, Asian, minority ethnics, LGBT women in your companies, because it's gonna lead to bigger revenues and more growth. Can't argue with that. You just can't. So, that's gonna be an end, sorry, that's gonna be the end of today's episode, but do catch us next week. And for now, this is Blair and I sign up. <laughs>